All right, ladies, here we go. We're looking at section 6.3. That's trig equations. Now, hopefully you remember um, the difference between an equation and an expression, right? Hopefully you remember we have a function. Say we have y is equal to, or let's make it f of x. Let's look at a quadratic, right? x squared plus 5x plus 6, right? Uh, we can graph this function, and you get a solution. Um, or you get a graph that looks something like this, right? Uh, now, if we were looking to solve this quadratic equation, the only difference is that we make the function equal to zero. So x squared plus 5x plus 6. And when you just made y equal to zero, what you're looking for are the x-intercepts, right? So that doesn't change at all when we're solving trig equations. What we're looking for are the x-intercepts of the equation when we make it equal to zero, Okay, so a couple different things here we're going to look at. Uh, first off, we're going to look at two types of solutions, okay? First of all, we have what we call conditional solutions, okay? They are over a specific interval, uh, for example, 0 to 2 pi. Uh, also, uh, you can have this, right, uh, to 360 degrees, right? Sometimes it's from negative pi to pi, just make sure that if they have a conditional solution that you look at the interval and make sure you identify all the ones within that interval, okay? Now, if you're looking for over the entire domain, uh, this is when we start doing things like, uh, okay, well, it occurs at uh, pi over three, and then that occurs every two pi, every full rotation, and we go two pi n. In the back of the book of your answers, you're going to have plus or minus two pi n, but what they don't identify is that the n is an integer, and if n is an integer, then that means that it could be a positive or negative number, so you don't actually need the plus or minus, okay? That'll be clearer as we go through this, don't worry. So let's keep looking here. Uh, remember that solutions to equations are where the function crosses the x-axis. That was what I was trying to show you before. And now we're going to basically look at a bunch of solutions, okay? So this is kind of your basic solution, right, or basic function. And we look at this. So 2 sine x minus, let's go, equals 1, right? And then you have sine x equals 1 half. So what we need to remember with these equations, what you need to remember and what you might want to write down right now are your special angle triangles. This is a 30-60 triangle, and it's 1, 2, root 3. I like to pretend that it's on an xy axis now so that you can see that the sine of 30 is 1 half. So the solution for this would be 30 degrees. I would like it in radians as well, so pi over 6. So here we have pi over 6, because it's got two pi, so we may as well call it pi over six, right, because in radians. Now, where else does this one occur, right? And then we have to think about our sines of trig functions in various quadrants. This is a positive one-half. Sine is positive here, and it's positive here. So if that's a reference angle of 30 degrees, that's 150, or five pi over six. And those would be the two solutions for this equation right here okay now the general solution would be pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and also 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and then you can specify that n is an element of an integer if you want all right i'm not going to be too picky about those but they will definitely uh, be picky about those in calculus in next year or two when you're uh, hopefully doing this in university. Well, hopefully. I don't know if I mean hopefully, but whatever. Now, I did a bunch of these examples in class, but it might not be a bad idea to do them again. All right? Why don't you guys have a look at this? Maybe pause the video and see what you can do. All right? So we've got to make it equal to zero, right? And we want to isolate the x. Now, the x, however, is intrinsically attached with the sign. You can't split it up. Okay, you can take the negative out, but you can't take the x away from the cos. So if you want to isolate the variable, you're not isolating only the x, you're isolating cos x. So the rules of algebra apply here. I can bring this negative cos x over to this side, and I'll get 2 cos x, and I'll get negative root 2 over on this side. And then if we isolate the x, we get cos x equals negative root 2 over 2. This might not be 
poignantly clear with regards to uh, special angle triangles. But um, what I'd like you to think about is the possibility of it being a 45, 1, 1, root 2. You see a root 2, so you're pretty confident that it's probably going to be dealing with um, the 45, right? Because this is a 45, just like we had this for uh, a 30, 60, 90, right? Uh, 1, 2, root 3. Now we have a 45, 1, 1, root 2, all right? Now, the cos of this cos of 45 is 1 over root 2. What many of you might not see, unfortunately, is that this and this are exactly the same. It's called rationalizing the denominator when we have a radical. So you go times root 2, times root 2 gives you root 2 over 2, okay? And that ends up being the same as this. So what we're looking at is negative cos, all sine, tan, cos. So the 45 degree angle is here and here. Oh no, wait, sorry. Let me start over again. It's here and here. My apologies, right? Because it's negative, all sine, tan, cos. So cos and cos are negative here. So what we're looking at is... Uh, so this is 45. That's 45 or pi over 4. So my x would be 3 pi over 4. And my x would be uh, 5 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. And these would be your solutions over the interval 2 pi. Your general solution would be plus 2 pi n plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer, n is an integer. Okay? Uh, yeah. So let's keep going because this is so much fun. Here we have another one. So if you rearrange this, you're going to have 10x is equal to negative 1 over root 3. Root 3, root 3, root 3. Well, let's have a look. Root 3, root 3, root 3. Uh, okay, it looks to me like it might be this one. 1, 2, root 3. So that's a 30 degree angle here, or a pi over 6, right? 1 over root 3, all sine, tan, cos. Negative, negative, negative. So you want this one and you want this one, right? So now your x is going to be, well, this is pi over 6 in here. So it's going to be uh, 5 pi over 6, right? And then down here it's going to be 11, uh, sorry, 11 pi over 6, all right? pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now, when we do our general solution here, my general solution, so this is over the interval, over 0x to 2 pi. If I want the general solution, well, you take the first one. Now, you could go plus 2 pi n and then go 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, but hopefully you can see that these are symmetrical and they occur every pi, like this, boom, 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 every pi. So you can just take the first one and say that it's plus 2 pi n. That's it. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do 11 pi over 6, oh, sorry, not plus 2 pi n, plus pi n, dummy, dumbass. So yeah, because it happens every pi now. Right? If you wanted to go this plus 2 pi n and 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, you could do that as well. Kind of redundant, though. If you can see that there's symmetry in it, why not simplify it uh, to something a little bit easier to deal with, right? So what you're seeing here, guys, is a bunch of these simpler ones. What we don't necessarily see are, uh, well, we'll do it. Deal. We'll, we'll probably make a, a video with some harder ones as well, but let's keep going with some of these here, okay? So let's see what we can do with this. We like making them equal to zero, so why don't we do that with this as well? Sine x, tan x, minus 2, tan x equals zero. Some people might think, well, why can't I just divide by tan, divide by tan? You get sine x equals 2. You can do that, but what happens is you just got rid of a part of your function, which means you're going to miss some of your answers, okay? Try to keep everything in there until you um, have it all factored out. Uh, speaking of factoring, is there something that you can take out here, right? And notice that you can actually take out a, a tan x, right? And if you take out a tan x, you're going to left, be left with sine x minus 2 equals 0. Now, hopefully you can remember this thing called the zero product law. But if you have a times b equals zero, that means a equals b, uh, sorry, a equals zero, 
A equals zero and B equals zero. So you look at both factors, right? So I'm going to take both of these. I'm going to say 10x is zero. I'm going to say sine x minus two equals zero. And you're going to solve them each individually. 10x equals zero. So 10x is a y over x. So what we need to look at is we need to find out where your y is zero. And if you're looking at your um, unit circle, hopefully you can see that y is zero when it's down here and then when it's down here. So it's zero and pi, right? So from the 10x one, we get x is equal to zero and x is equal to pi, right? And then now we let's look at this one here sine x equals 2. Well, if you look at your graph of sine x, it goes to 1 and it goes to negative 1. This one will not work because it never reaches 2. So this is kind of a redundant solution. And what we now have are two solutions right here. This would be over the interval 2 pi. And if you wanted a general solution, it would be pi plus pi n, n is an element of an integer, again, because it occurs here and here and here and here and here and here and here every half revolution so we can simplify our general solution. I know this is so much fun, ladies and gentlemen. I know you can't get enough of this, so I'm going to give you another one. Woohoo! Thanks, Mr. Gregor. You're awesome. Well, there is another method by which we're going to solve these. Uh, we talked about factoring here. Uh, this is another situation where we're going to factor. And hopefully you can see the connection between this thing and this thing. Pretty confident that you could factor this. Well, if you can factor this, you can factor this. Just because it has a trig function and it shouldn't pause, uh, cause you too much grief, right? So this is going to be secant x, secant x, right? There's going to be a 2 and a 1, and it's going to be a minus 2 and a plus 1, right? Just like this would be x uh, plus 1 and x minus 2, okay? And now, since this is equal to 0, we look at each of these separately. So secant x equals negative 1, and secant x equals 2. Well, secant is cos. So cos x, it's a reciprocal, so let's do this. And then cos x is equal to one half. Sorry, the reciprocal of negative one is not negative one half. It's still negative one. So now we're looking at solving these two trig equations. Okay. Now I've showed you a couple different ways of doing this. Um, trig special angles work, but what you can also think about with uh, the sine and cosine functions is you know what a cosine function looks like. It equals negative 1 when you hit pi. So from this thing right away, you can get a solution of x equals pi. If you can't do it that way, think about uh, a unit circle, right? Where you have your x and your y. And since cos is x, where does x equal negative 1? Well, if you come over here, boom, on this side, x will be negative 1. So at pi or 180 degrees. So this is a solution for that bad boy there. Now you're looking at 1 half. At this point, you should probably remember that it's a 30, 60, 90. So 1, 2, root 3, that being 30. All sine, tan, cos, positive. So you want this one and you want this one. So the solution for this would be pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. All right? So your overall solution is that and that. And if you wanted to write a general solution, you would have to go pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Uh, 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, and then pi plus 2 pi n. Okay, and all of these, n is an element of an integer. So that would be a technical way to write down the entire solution for this bad boy right here. Okay, holy guacamole. Hey, ladies, holy guacamole. So much paper, I'm killing trees. Oh, well. All right, uh, let's do two more here before I leave you alone. Um, this one is a little awkward in the sense that we have a cos squared and a sine. But you need to remember the identities that we dealt with. And one of the main identities that we use is this one, sine squared x plus 
cos squared x is equal to 1. So if you want to replace cos squared x, you can write out cos squared x as equaling 1 minus sine squared x, right? So right now, let's rewrite this. 2 bracket 1 minus sine squared x plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0. And then we multiply it out. 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0, right? Um, I'm going to move, let's do this, 2 sine, minus 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x, 2 minus 3 is negative 1 equals 0. I don't like having this negative in front, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change all the signs. So that's a minus, now that's a plus, and that becomes a plus. And we end up with, again, a quadratic that we can solve, okay? So this is exactly the same as this. So very, very close, right? But just we know that coses can equal sines by a bit of a phase shift. So we've got equivalent quadratic functions. This one's a little bit easier to solve. We can do this, right? So 2 sine x, and then I got a sine x. Take a sec to see if you can finish this factoring thing off, okay? Uh, okay, looks like it's going to be a minus 1 and a minus 1, right? So now equals 0. So you have from this, 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. That means sine x is equal to 1 half. We have to solve that. And in this side, sine x equals 1, and we have to solve that. So in this case, we need to solve both equations. Okay? Um, you can think about it from the, the graph, right? Sine x looks like this. It's equal to 1 at pi over 2. So this one here is pi over 2. Uh, one half, it's right here. Well, we can't really read it that easily off the graph, so we can use special angle triangles, right? One half again, this one keeps popping up, right? 30 degrees, so, and it's positive. So, uh, all sine, tan, cos, it's here and here. So in this case, x is equal to pi over six, and five pi over six, all right? So again, there's your solutions. Uh, and pi over 2 is also 1 because that's where it's equal to 1, right? Your y value. So you got this answer, this answer, and this answer in one revolution. All of these plus 2 pi n, where n is an element of an integer. That's how we would solve these ones here. Uh, not sure if you want me to go over this last one. Uh, maybe I'll just leave it at that. I might make another video with more of these uh, equations if you like. The biggest thing that you need to remember, folks, uh, here you go. You need to know your special angle triangles. Uh, this is 30, 60, boom, 1, 2, root 3. You need to know your 45, 45, 45, or 90, sorry, where this is 1, 1, root 2. Don't forget that 30 degrees is pi over 6, right? 60 degrees is pi over 3. 45 degrees is pi over 4, and then we can get all the other multiples of that. You can't forget that all sine, tan, cos. You can't forget that as well. You might want to remember your original sine function and your original cos function. There are a lot of things that you need to remember to solve these equations. And the sooner you get all this stuff, the better off you will be.